We're about to open the door today to Ava Sashem for a businessman. We're going to revert back to a Gomorrah we learned together in the section on Tzedakah. Now we're going to learn it again. Be'yund. The Amr Rabbi Yochanan, my dixiv aser to aser. What does it mean when the Torah writes the double language of aser to aser? You should surely take your tithes. Aser bishvil shetit asher. You must take your tithes in order that you should become wealthy. That's the promise of the Torah. Give your maisa. Because that's the secret to wealth generation in the Torah. Tell me the posuk you're learning. Amalei, I said to Aser. Amalei, the little boy said to Rabbi Yochanan, Umay, I said to Aser. What does it mean, this double language of Aser to Aser? Amalei. Aser bishvil shetit asher. Give your maisa in order that you should become rich. Amalei, said the little boy to Rabbi Yochanan. Minolach. How do you, from where do you know this to be true? Amalei zil nasi. He said to him, go try it out. Go test it. Is it permissible to test Hashem? You're not allowed to test God. This is an exception to the rule. You're allowed to test God in this mitzvah that He will bless you with wealth. It's the only mitzvah in the Torah we are allowed to actually go out and test Him because Hashem begs you to test Him in it. Shenema. Have you as call a maisa el beisa oitza? Bring all your maisa into the storehouse. Vayehi teref bebeisi. Let there be food in my home, says Hashem. Ubechanuni na bezois. I beg of you, please, to test me in this area. Amar Hashem tzvakois. Im loy eftach lachem es arubas hashemai varikoisi lachem brocha ad blidai. If I don't open up for you the windows of shemayim. And rain down upon you, empty upon you, brocha without end. Says Rabbi Yochanan to Resh Lakish's son, Hashem's begging you to go out and test him. Test if Tzedakah will bless you with wealth. My Adbli die. What does the end of that verse mean, says the Gemara? Ad bli die, which simply translated means, I'll give you brocha without end. Amar rami bar chama amarav, ad she yivlu sif soseichi miloy mar die. Until your lips are worn out thin from saying, die, die, die. It's enough, 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 enough money. That's how much financial brocha you will be blessed with from Hashem. I'd be die until your lips are worn out from saying enough. Let's understand this Gemara. The Gemara clearly is written to motivate a person to give charity, to take maisa from their crops, and as Tosfus added, all maisa from ribis, from prakmatia, your financial tithes that you take, your tzedakah that you give. The Gemara is motivating you to give it. And, and which area, aspect of your life, which middah is it calling on to use as the driving force and motivation for giving tzedakah? Chem das moment. Rabbi Yochanan says that the Pasuk says, if you give maisa, Hashem will bless you with wealth. So go give maisa because you're going to become wealthy. It's speaking to a person who chemdas momen burns inside of them. And says Rabbi Yochanan, if you want momen, go get it. The way to go get it is to give tzedakah. And you'll become a fastidious giver of tzedakah. And you can test Hashem in this area. He'll definitely do it. Now, what do we know about a person who possesses this middah of chemdas moment? 
We've learned together various sources. Oh, you have kesef. If you're somebody who loves money, lo yispa kesef. You're never going to be satiated by money. Yaish lo imana roitza masai. You've got a hundred, you'll want two hundred. Two hundred, you'll want four hundred. It's an insatiable, unquenchable desire. And it's to this person that the Gemara is speaking. Go use your unquenchable desire for money to get you involved in the midst of tzedakah. i ask you a question. The end of that Gemara, let's read it again. My ad blidai. What do the words mean that Hashem will give you brocha ad blidai? Amarami barchama amarav ad sheyivlu sifsoseichi meloi mardai. Until your lips are worn thin from saying, I have enough money. Thank you, Hashem, it's enough. Stop, stop, stop. Excuse me. What just happened there? This person came into the sugya of giving to Dhaka with Chemdas Momin burning inside of them. It was the driving force of their motivation to give. And at the end, they say, I've got enough money. That's never supposed to happen. That's impossible. If you love money, you'll never be satiated by it. If you have 100, you want 200, 200, 400. It's unquenchable. How did it get quenched? Something incredible went on here in this Gomorrah. You took Chemdas Momen, which is one tract, and can never be taught, and we trained it to be Samach Bechalkoi, to be happy with what it has. We taught it his stapkus, we taught it to be contented, to have enough. Chemdas Momen got trained and developed to the ultimate place that it's supposed to get to, to his stapkus, to Simcha Bechelkoi, through the mitzvah of giving to Doka. It's absolutely incredible. Because the Gra taught us that on the one end of the spectrum you've got Chemdas Momen. And when you've developed it, you get to his stapkus. Now we know what the secret ingredient is to get there. It's called tzedakah. Tzedakah is the action and the mitzvah which trains Chemdas Momen to get to his stapkus. And the Maharal told us, if you get to his stapkus, if you get to this level where you're happy with what you've got, where it's enough, where you have enough, you tell Hashem, please, no more money, I've got enough. It's inevitable that you'll be in love with God. And with that, we've closed the circle. There's three ingredients that you need in order to contain, train, and eventually train your Chemdas Momen to become his Stapkus. To contain it, you need Yira. To tame it, you need fixed times for learning Torah. But to train it and develop it to become Samach Bechalkoi and to say, I've got enough. There's only one mitzvah that can do that, and that's the mitzvah of Tzedakah. We've traveled an incredible journey. Our motivation to work every single day we discussed is to make money. God wants us to work because He wants a relationship. He wants us to be in love with Him. We laid out in part 5, part 6, and part 7. What is it that the Torah guides us to do? Which mitzvahs to be involved in to achieve our goal of wealth creation? And they were tzedakah, fixed times for learning Torah, and yira. And now we've just learned together then what are the actions that you need to do? What do you need to do at work in order to achieve Hashem's goal for work, which is to get a relationship with Him, to be in love with Him? 
exactly the same thing. It's a DACA, fixed times for learning in Europe. And now we can really understand the words of the Rambam that we learned together. When he describes a person who engages with Torah for self-interest, for Chemdas Momen, and he says, the masses lose out on nothing when their motivation for keeping Torah is reward and punishment. They're not yet perfect. For Ulam, however, he says, it's so good for them to engage in these mitzvahs. For their own selfish motivation. Engage in Tadok, engage in learning, in all the other mitzvahs, Shabbos, Yom Tif, Gezel, promiscuity. Stay away from them for your own selfish motivations. Why? Because your selfish motivation will give you the energy, the consistency, the effort in fulfilling the Torah which is required. And from that incredible, energized fulfillment of Hashem's Torah. They will be awakened to know real truth in this world. And they will become servants out of love. We have discovered together truly the other side of the coin. The side of the coin that we always look at is the drive for money and how to amass it. But if we follow the Torah's guidelines how to do that, we will first of all achieve wealth. But we will achieve something far more valuable than that on the other side of the coin. Love of Hashem.